anoint with your Holy Spirit. Guide us and strengthen us. Speak to our hearts. Lord, we are nothing in ourselves. We don't know words of our own. But Lord, we thank you for your word, for your truth, and for your ways. Guide us now, Lord, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. This is Jesus in one of the first encounters with the disciples, early encounters with the disciples. Not quite the first. Maybe even before they were disciples. <laughs> we all have a before story, don't we? Every one of us here. <laughs> it's like before we, we met Jesus. John chapter 2, famously that's the wedding at Cana. That's billed as being the first miracle that Jesus did. Sometimes we, we, we struggle to put together the timeline because you think, well, hang on a minute. It says that the, his, his disciples were with him. Yeah, they were probably invited to the wedding as well before they were disciples. That was their, maybe their first impression was seeing Jesus turn the water into wine. Then later they encounter him again. You've got to remember that Jesus is living in small towns. Nazareth, Cana, uh, Capernaum, Bethsaida. You'd meet these people again. We have these stories of how people came. Matthew. Nathaniel, Andrew, Philip, how they came to be followers of Jesus, how Jesus met them. We see their story, we see that how each one of them encountered Jesus, and more so with James and John and Peter. That's uh, in there quite a few times. Peter, actually, we're calling him Peter, although he's called Simon here, but he gets called Peter than the rest of the, of the Bible, so I think we're okay with that. He's already encountered Jesus, actually in the chapter before, verse uh, 38 of chapter 4. His mother-in-law, sick of a fever, has already been healed. Jesus came, touched her, raised her up, healed her, restored her to life, to health. And he saw that. He witnessed it with his own eyes. So when the following time after Jesus is on the sea, the, the seashore, and he says, "Oh, Peter, can I borrow your boat? Just gonna, I, I want to teach the people, and I want to just, uh, I'll, I'll go a little way out to shore because actually." The acoustics are good off the water. I can speak, people can hear me, they'll all be able to see me if I'm out to sea. Uh, it, you know, it's practical, it, it's a good way to, to preach and to, and to, to talk to people. Uh, I'll, I'll borrow your boat. Probably Peter feels that he can't say no. <laughs> you know, imagine that, you know, I, coming from work, I've been working all night, we've, we've, got, we've caught nothing, we've had a bad night's fishing. I'm washing my nets and then I'm going to go home. And then here comes Jesus and says, Can I borrow your boat? Is that all right? Yeah. Well, well, okay. And then you think, Well, he came and healed our mother in law the other week. I can't really say, I can't really say no, can I? You know, it, it looks bad, it looks like I'll be ungrateful. You know, we, we, We've had a healing in the family. I can't, I can't say no. I, yeah, I want to go home. I've had a bad night. I've had a bad night's work. And I'm fed up. And I, I can't be doing with it. But I can't really say no, can I? So, I, yeah. Puts out to sea. Teaches the people. What happened? Yeah, now I've got to wait for this whole preaching to finish, haven't I? Can't sneak off 
can't do anything, it's my boat he's in. I can't, I can't just leave it. I'll have to sit, I'll have to sit and listen now, won't I? It's like, uh, well, yeah, that's it. But God has a plan. God has a plan. He has great plans for Peter. It's funny, isn't it? Jesus knew what would speak to Peter's heart. You know, our God is very personal with each one of us. And he knows the things that are on our heart and he knows the things that are going on in our mind. And he finds the things that actually will speak to us. He finds ways to get through to us. Maybe that we don't even know ourselves, we don't even realise ourselves. What would really make Peter notice Jesus? What's really gonna gonna speak to him in, in his language about his life and the things that he finds important, the things he understands? And it's gonna be about fishing, isn't it? It's gonna be about, you know, well, what if I could get all the fish that it is possible to get? You know, maybe we have a desire in this world, in this life of if only I could do this. If only I could do that. And I've seen it time and time again, and, and even for myself, that every now and again God comes uh, along and shows us and says, Hey, if you really want all that, I can give you all of that. But actually, you know what? That's not going to satisfy you. That's not what it's about. There's a bigger plan. There's something deeper. There's something more going on in here. And it's like, yeah, well, if that, you know, uh, yeah, if that, that's what you want, we can do that. But is that what you really want? Or is that just a, an outward sign of what's really going on inside? Wow. You know what? Uh, I've heard it said that there's five miracles that take place on this lake. Five times Jesus comes and he and, he's, and he does something on, on this this little body of water never been to Israel but actually the uh, lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee it's not that big compared uh, we, we call it the sea but it's actually just a, a big very big lake inland, inland water but uh Five times, Peter does does miracle. Uh, <laughs> Jesus does miracles that will speak to Peter there. Why? Because he knows this lake. He knows it. It's his environment. It's what he's happy with. There's the walking on water. There's the calming of the, the storm at sea. There's the coins in the fishes now. There's this miraculous draft of fishes and then there's another one as well at the end after the crucifixion when they thought, oh well, we just go back to doing what we did before. We go back to our old life. And Jesus says, no, remember the, the miracle. I'll do it again. Another one. <laughs> but God, God knows exactly the things that go on in our hearts. And he desperately wants to draw us. He just wants us to draw near to him be open to him but 
verse 5 says, And Simon answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. It's funny. There's ways, different ways we could read it. It could have been sarcastic. You know, oh well, you know what, we 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 have we have toiled all night. But well, if you if you, if, if you think <laughs> You think you know more about fishing on this lake than I do. I've been doing this all my life. You know, it's like, oh, you know, that, that, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll like, you know, if you say, oh, well, if, if Mr. Big Man says so, yeah, we'll do it. I don't know. Might, might not have been. It's one, it's one possibility that that's the way, it would, that's the way we could read it. Or it could actually be genuine. You know, well, this is the situation. Hasn't been a good night. But we'll try it. But think about this. At thy word. That's really what I wanted to focus on today. Nevertheless, at thy word. Wow. Let's signal in on just that part of it today. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God into our life. What is the word of Jesus for my life at this situation? Nevertheless, at thy word. You know, the miracle here is that actually Peter was obedient. That's why I don't think he was sarcastic. <laughs> because he actually did do what Jesus said. Yeah, okay, fine, we'll do it. We'll try it. You know. I suppose in one sense you think, well, here, we, we've got nothing to lose. We've taken nothing. We've had a day wasted. We may as well try again. <laughs> well, what is the word of God for us today? something yesterday about the statistics of someone reading God's word taking a little bit of God's word and they said that actually someone who, who receives God's word whether it's like preaching or reading studying once a week church on Sunday, okay it, ha it can have a little effect on their life but probably not that great of effect, of effect. and they said twice a week it goes up a bit three times a week but apparently they said four times a week reading the word of God, focusing on the word of God, apparently the statistically people who do that Suddenly it makes a difference in their life. Suddenly actually things change. And you're thinking, wow, we forget actually that the Word of God has power. The Word of God is quick and powerful. Quick means living. Living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide 
It's the, the soul from the spirit. Do we need our soul and our spirit dividing? Do we need our emotional life, our thought life, our, our, our intellectual concepts separating from our spiritual life? Do we need our, our, our self-image separating from our spiritual life? Wow. The parts of the soul. God deals with that through his word. Nevertheless, at thy word. Wow. You know, it's good for us to get excited about God's word. I was thinking this. Again, it's like the times in my life when things happened. The times when I was excited about God's word. And that's what we need. Is to get back to God's word and say, hey, you know what? This is good stuff. This is a, you know, Psalm 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Great words for us to re remember. When we come to God's word, it's, this is life-giving. This is life changing. Psalm 107, 20, God sent his word and healed them. You know what? We, there is healing when we come to God's word. There is healing when we come. Inner healing. Emotional healing. Mental healing. Healing of our self-image. Who we are. Who we think we are. Who the world says I am. Who my actions say I am. You know, we come to a place where God says, No. I died for you. I went to the cross for you. It's forgiven. Whatever has gone on, whatever uh, has been there in the past, it's forgiven. Your past is gone. Your failings are dealt with. Your debts are paid for. You know, whatever whatever it was, our weaknesses, our failings, God has dealt with them. We have up the Still the verse from the school, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Janet quoted it last week and she quoted the verse after. I was looking at it the other day and looking at the verse before. It says, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Oh, we can't, we shouldn't hate. Oh, you know, you can't hate. Oh, hate's a bad word. Actually, hating every false way, hating untruth, hating deception. You know, that's, uh, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, loving God's truth, loving God's way, that's fine. But you know what? By God's precepts, we get the understanding. His word is a lamp to our feet. Wow. We're guided. We're shown the right way. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that trust in him. 
God's word, it's a protection on our life as well. A covering. Wow. What can God's word do in my life today? That is the question. What will I allow God's word to do in my life today? That is the real question. Wow. Think about it. Yes, there's the written word, the logos, uh, in the Greek. The written word on the page, the Bible, the word of God. But there's also rhema. Rhema is God's personal word by the Spirit. When he speaks to us, as we get to know him, we get sensitive to his voice. And God speaks into our, into our situation. Just thinking about that. The words of Jesus to people. Talitha Kumi, Mark, Mark 5, 41. What does it mean? Little girl, I say unto you, arise. Jairus' daughter. She's dead. They're already mourning her. Jesus comes and a word. A personal word to her. I'm speaking to you. But it's funny, actually, you think, well, it's only two words. How did they get all of that into two words? It's because the, the King James translators wanted to make, make sure we understood the grammar of it all. And the, the, like, the little girl, I say unto thee, it's because, like, the telithery, it's, it's vocative case. It's the case you use, it's the grammatical case you use when you're speaking to somebody. Not everyone, not at the whole room, not everyone who was mourning, not the parents, but to the girl herself. I'm speaking to you. And I say to you, rise, and she got, she got up. She was revived. You know, this is the power of God's word. To the leper, be thou healed. Wow. And that's it. He was healed. To the sinful woman, thy sins are forgiven thee. To the paralyzed man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Take up thy bed and walk. <laughs> wow. To the woman with the issue of blood, thy faith is saved. Nevertheless, at thy word, Jesus. Nevertheless, I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to take your word, Jesus, and I'm going to trust it. And I'm going to put it into action. I'm going to live by faith. Go sin no more. Jesus says that to two people. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yes, miracles. But actually, go and sin no more. Wow. Why does he say that to some people and not others? Because he's a personal God and he knows what we need to hear. <laughs> what he says to us, it might not be the same as he says to someone else. Two people listen to the same message and they get something completely different from it. Praise God. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the voice of God's Spirit. You know, our, our Christian life, our Christian walk, is learning to trust God's word over and above what we know, over and above what we think, over and above our past experience, over and above our own understanding a lot of the time. Wow. Is that right? Is that good? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. Tells us in Proverbs. Yeah. Oh, but I, you know, but I, you know, I, well, yes, it was good at church, but, ah, uh, you know, but what about this? But 
this is the thing I, uh, this is the thing that's on my mind this is the thing I'm worrying about this is the thing that I, I you know I, this is what the doctor told me this is what the BBC said this is what the you know the politicians told me this is what the government this is what my aunt Sheila says my mother always told me that you're fine okay but actually maybe maybe God says different Maybe God says something that we need, we can trust. Maybe God says something we need to put into action. Lean not on your own understanding. When we're leaning, what happens? We have to be careful what we're leaning on, don't we? Because we could fall. <laughs> when we're leaning, we start to totter. <laughs> and we're leaning there, it's like it's, you know, we... We laid up flat on our face, and you know. And the Bible says, "Yeah, don't lean on your own understanding." Why? Well, because what well, your understanding of the world might be very small. I don't know, <laughs> but actually, every one of us, however much we've understood about this world, is very small in the whole scheme of things. You know, what do we know about our own little life, our own, our own little world? But we have a saviour. And we have the power of the living God. And we have the, the, the infinite wisdom of God's word that we can rely on for our life. Amen. Now think about that as well. How many prophecies are there in the word of God? Thousands. How many prophecies were there about Jesus? Hundreds. And they all came true to the letter at the time. How many prophecies are there still to be fulfilled? Well, we still see prophecies getting fulfilled. <laughs> Come to the book of Revelation class and you'll, you'll, you'll realise how many, how many things are, are, are still going on and still getting fulfilled. And it's like, wow. Why? Because this is the infinite wisdom of a God, of a God who knows our future as well as our past. The God who knows exactly what we need. <coughs> Not what we might like to hear, but what we need to hear. <laughs> because that's the difference, isn't it? We don't come to church to hear necessarily what we just want to hear. But what God, what the Spirit wants to communicate to us. says go out launch out take a step of faith launch out into the deep what happened yeah. we've, we've, uh, we've, we've tried that we've done that launch out launch out at the word of Jesus take a step of faith according to what what the Lord Jesus Christ says to you today that is, the, that is the point. Oh, yeah, but, we, but we've tried, I've tried that. I've done that before. I've done, yeah, I know, I, I, I know how it's going to end. Really, Peter, do you? Yes, I've been there all night. Same thing all night. Why do they go fishing at night? Well, it's quiet. After a, after a big crowd of people have just been listening to Jesus all chattering around and going off and getting their lunch and sort of saying, oh, wasn't that a good message? And, 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 and going off into the villages. That's not the time to be fishing, is it? There's loads of noise. But Jesus says, no, try it now. That, that doesn't make any sense. Listen, I'm the fisherman here. I know, I, I know what should be done. I know how to do it. No, trust against your own understanding, against your own wisdom, against everything that's gone before, against what, what Zebedee has told James and John. Zebedee left in the boat. <laughs> Diane is sniggering like a, 
Yeah, you're yeah, thinking of the magic round. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Yes, we know. <laughs> we were all there. Boing, boing. <laughs> boing, boing. He must have been a baggy uh, Anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, but, um, but no. Um, yeah, the a prominent man, Zebedee, he's mentioned a lot. It, it must have been a reason for it. He was obviously well known in the community. For the spring of Easter. No, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but uh, they left him. His sons left him in the battle, followed Jesus. Where do you think you're going? Come back here this minute. No, I'm going to follow Jesus. Wow. And I like this as well. Because... What does Peter say? He sees exactly what Jesus is able to do. And he says, uh, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. And Jesus says, well, you know, Peter, actually, no, I'm not that bad. I think you're a really nice person, really. And I don't want to stigmatise you and your, your behaviour. And, I, and I, I, you know, I think, I, I, I think that actually you're a... No, he doesn't say any of that, does he? Jesus does not argue with that at all. Uh, <laughs> Peter says, hey, behold, I'm a sinful man. <laughs> does, does Jesus sort of say... No, you're wrong. No, 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 no. No, he doesn't. No, of course not. He agrees with he agrees with Peter. <laughs> depart from him. But he doesn't depart. But what he does say is fear not. Fear not. From now on you're gonna catch men. From now on I'm gonna make you a fisher of men. Wow. Yeah, we're a sinner. Every one of us. We're all sinners. We're all failures. We've all done things that we regret, things that we know are wrong. There's no denying that. And Jesus doesn't deny that. And Jesus doesn't redefine that. And Jesus doesn't say any of these, the, these things that people would say today. About, oh, well, we have to, you know, this whole thing I think is going on at the moment about rewriting books out of sensitivity reading and it's like, oh well, you can't mail oh Roald Dahl says that somebody's fat in these books and we can't say that no, you know what the Lord Jesus Christ he doesn't wait, he's, he's not into this pussyfooting around Yes, amen, you're a sinful man. But guess what? Fear not. Because there's a plan. There's a plan to deal with your sin. <laughs> there's a plan. Follow me, trust me, walk with me, go with me, and we'll find out what happens. There's a new calling. There's a new life. And it's based on trusting Christ. And it's based on, on trusting Him as Saviour. And it might seem like a risky step. They forsook everything. And it might seem like a little bit of a, 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 a hair-brained scheme. Well, why do you, you know, just leave everything? You just caught all these fish. You're going to leave them in the boat now. We just well, we've got to take them to market. We've got to gut them. We've got to, get to you know scale them. We've got to we've got to wash the nets again. No, just follow Jesus. Because mm. actually, there is something better. And actually, you know what? All your life, Peter, you've dreamed of having this massive catch of fish. 
oh, it'll make us wealthy and we'll be okay, and, you know, it'll... and then it comes. And then we get exactly what we want. And then actually we discover that that's not what we really wanted anyway, in the first place. And then we realise that it actually doesn't really satisfy But, but Jesus is there. And he just says, no. Follow me. Trust me. Go with me. See what happens. I'm not asking you to do a lot. I'm not asking you to do anything very complicated. Just trust me. had already made that first step of yeah okay at your word nevertheless at your word I'll try it let's pray Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord thank you Lord that you are the God who knows us you know every detail of our life. You know exactly the things that are on our hearts today, on our minds, the things that worry us, the things that scare us, the things that we are concerned about, the things that maybe we want, the things that maybe we secretly want that no one else knows about. But Lord, you give us something actually that is different. give us something that actually will really satisfy us. You give us forgiveness. You give us life. You give us hope. You give us a peace that passes understanding. You give us a secure future. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. the things that we think we desire the things that we think we need are different from the things that you know that we need <coughs> Lord we just pray that we would trust you we would seek you, we would find you we would know your heart for us we would, we would discover that question what can God's word do in my life today what does the Saviour for us. We thank you, Lord, that you died for us. And we thank you, Lord, that there's nothing we can add to that. It's not about our actions. It's not about our performance. It's simply trusting in what you've done for us already. Lord, we just pray if there's anyone out there watching today who has never trusted you as their Saviour. Lord, we just ask that this would be the day when they say, Lord, I need you. I need to know who you are. I need to know that I am forgiven. I know that I need something. I know that I need someone. I know that I can't undo my past, but I know that actually you are able to forgive. Thank you, Lord, that you've paid a price already. Thank you, Lord, that you've come to the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, that you care for me. You love me. Thank you, Lord, that you asked me to just trust you. Lord, I want to trust you now. I want you to be my saviour. Touch now, Lord, we pray. Fill me with your life. Fill me with your spirit. Help me to understand these things. Help me to trust you every step of the way. still working so take
care. God bless and see you again soon.